brothers in Christ, we have gathered here today to welcome a new novice into our midst. Dear brother, forget your former life and embrace your new vocation in the community of the monks of St. Benedict. Opus Dei, Obedientia, Obprobria, the service of God, obedience, and endurance of all discomfort. These are the cornerstones and succor of our order, which on this day shall become your own. Sustipe me, Domine, secundum eloquium tuum et vivam. Et non confundas me, ab expectatione mea. Suscipe me, Domine, secundum. In loquium tuum vivam, et, et non confundas me ab expectatione me. Uh. Accept your new name, Brother Gregor. And wear it with honor. Welcome, brother. <laughs> I am Antonius, a novice like you. I've been instructed to guide you around the monastery and tell you what you can expect and what your duties will be. Thanks for helping me out during the ceremony. I had no idea what I was supposed to do. You don't know Latin, do you? Don't worry. Work in the scriptorium will teach you fast enough. Why exactly are you here? Was it your choice? Or did someone force you to come? I'm being punished. If it were up to me, I'd still be spending my days in taverns and my nights with whores. I don't envy you. Unfortunately, you're here for the rest of your life. Is that a challenge? Would you tell me something about yourself? I'm a novice and I'm here because I'd make a poor merchant. I like books and I want an education. Although I must say, so far the monastic life's been quite unexpected. All right. Let's go then. Good. But before we do, here's a letter directly from the prior telling you all your regular duties from tomorrow onwards. What? Make sure to read it this evening, so you know how things work. Right, we can go now. Follow me closely. I'll explain everything as we go. Remember one word. Discipline. It's your job to work and pray. You serve the Lord now, not your own bodily needs. Peace be with you, brother. Yeah, that was a sasser lock. I don't like St. Benedict. He's always a traitor. This is the way to the dormitory, where we all sleep. You'll find a free bed there, which is now yours. Do you know the first thing the monastery taught me? To appreciate sleep. We rise before dawn every day. Takes a bit of getting used to. How is this even high up out of here? This is the garden, a place for silent contemplation and meditation. Centuries ago, this monastery was founded by the most esteemed of brothers, Saint Procopius. His earthly remains can be found in a cave under the monastery, and his spirit wanders the corridors at night. 
punishing any misbehaving novices. <laughs> so beware. Here are the Frattery and Scriptorium, together with the library. These are the places where we work. Ora et labora. Pray and work. As a novice, you must always listen to your superior brethren. And above us monks are the prior and the cicators, who punish every infraction. You'll know them by the canes they carry. Do what they say. This is the refectory, where we come together to eat. During meals, you must be silent. Only one brother reads aloud from the rule of St. Benedict. The rule is the only law we recognize, with the exception of those from God himself. If you break any of its precepts, expect a swift punishment. But I've already told you about the circuitors. of our monastery, a trove of learning. We don't just read books here, we also copy them. You too will learn how. And that's all. Today you are still free from duty, but tomorrow you begin work like the others. If you need anything, ask any of the brothers. We'll be glad to help you. And I recommend you get to know the other novices. You already know me. Then there is Siskin, Yodok, and Lucas. Thanks for showing me around. There's a lot to learn here. I'd like to ask you something about the monastery. Uh... It occurred to me you might be the man to ask. I'm looking for some lockpicks. Do you know anyone in the monastery who could help me? Lockpicks? You surprised me, brother. And you? A nobleman's son. But you could ask Brother Solarius. They say he used to be a thief. Oh, well. I need to make a confession. I'm no priest, but tell me what you've done. It's probably nothing to worry about. I'm here in the monastery looking for a thief. He had a hand in burning down the Neuhof stud. You don't say. And who are you to take such an interest? That's not important. Why are you telling me this anyway? What do you want from me? Perhaps you could help me find him? Yeah. The missing thief. If I knew anything, I'd tell you. But I suppose it must be one of the novices. I've only recently heard about the Neuhof incident. And all the other brethren have been here much longer than that. I know. Aside from me, there are only four novices. But still, I don't know which one he could be. Three? Please, leave me out of it. And you're right that it could be any one of them. No one knows anything about Lucas. Siskin might be a lot of things, but a monk isn't one of them. And Yodok is a slimy worm. It's it wouldn't surprise me if he was behind that massacre. Actually, the more I think about it, the less I like that Yodok. He's a treacherous rat who'd do anything to get in someone's good books. The thought of Yodok at Neuhof since chills up my spine. I don't think it was him. But please, don't tell a soul what we've been talking about. Don't fret, my friend. Your secrets are locked inside my lips.
let's go to bed. Let's see what happens. Cause I don't know what. Okay. Salvin, be well. Siskin. My name's Gregor, a novice. You can call me Siskin. Now, are you here of your own free will, or is this a punishment? Although, it's not important. Welcome to Purgatory. Did you say Purgatory? You'll see soon enough. Soon enough. Will you tell me something about yourself? Look, nothing against you, but I'd prefer not to talk about my past. Very well. I won't ask. Thank you. I pre I'd be interested to hear what you think about the other novices. Tell me about Antonius. Oh, if there was a monk I'd recommend as a friend, with of course the exception of myself, it would be Antonius. He has a calm soul, he's easy to talk to, and you can always rely on him. That's all.
started at three. Morning prayer, holiday meal. Well, I didn't eat, so I, I slept in. Go me. Look, I want to get this done in a day. Maybe? Why is it quiet? Whoa. Okay. What do I do now at 6 a.m.? Common meal. Can't you see? We're. We're in silence. Oh my gosh, when are you supposed to talk to these people? on daily manual labor. Idleness is the enemy of the soul. Therefore, the brethren should be occupied at certain times in manual labor, and again at fixed hours in sacred reading. To that end, we think that the time for each will be prescribed as follows. From Easter until the calends of October. When they come out from prime in the morning, let them labor at what whatever is eating? necessary until about the fourth hour. And from the fourth hour until about the sixth hour, so many monks. After the sixth hour, having left the field, let them rest on their beds in perfect silence. Or if anyone may perhaps want to read, let him read to himself in such a way as not to be disturbed. I don't know why this is. Show them all that is good and holy by his deeds even more than by his words, expounding the Lord's commandments in words to be intelligent among his disciples, but demonstrating the divine precepts by his actions for those of harder hearts and ruder minds. The abbot should always remember what he is and what he is called, and should know that to whom more is committed. From him more is required. Let him make no distinction of persons in the monastery. Let him not love one more than another, unless it be one whom he finds better in good works or in obedience. And let him not shut his eyes to the faults of offenders, but since he has the authority, let him cut out those faults by the roots as soon as they begin to appear. Remembering the fate of Heli, the priest of Syrah, the well-disposed and those of good understanding, let him correct with verbal admonition the first and second time. This is stupid.
this happen? You've got a strong constitution. Anyone else would have certainly died. What... What happened? Let me tell you a little story. Once upon a time, there was a young boy. He was lost and miserable. He had no future. He was tempted by his friends oh, into doing yeah. some foolish things. But he wasn't truly bad. Because when it came down to it, he ran away rather than keep doing foolish deeds. His former friends didn't take kindly to that, though, and wanted to punish him. So they sent a hunting dog yep. to find him and Advice. rip his throat. The boy wasn't stupid, though, and he knew that the hound was coming. He poisoned some food, and when the hound showed up, he gave it to him. He didn't expect the beast to live, but it did. And all of a sudden, the boy was sorry for what he tried to do. So he offered to make a bargain with the hound. I think I understand you. But the beast would need to know what deal he's being offered. You know, we're both pawns in someone else's game. They have plans for us. But we don't have to let them use us. We can just forget all about it and go our own way. I, I was a bandit and I was at Nihoth. I've robbed and stolen. But I swear to God, I've never in my life slain innocent people. What I saw at Nihoth made me realize my life was worth shit. But I still had a chance to change for the better. Here in the monastery, I've had plenty of time to think things over. But then you showed up and fucked it all up. So the evildoer changes his ways and finds God. And what exactly are you proposing? Both of us can leave this place. You can go back to your people. And I can go somewhere where I can live out my life in peace and no one will try to kill me. If we work together, we can both get what we want. What if I wanted a different option? You could kill another novice, I suppose. If news of the murder got out from the monastery, my former friends might believe I'm dead. But I'm offering you a solution that doesn't require any killing. Before we make a run for it, we'll make it look like someone's killed me. Loads of blood, a tattered scrap of my habit, and footprints leading towards the river. No one will bother looking for my body there. There we'll split up. You go for your bounty, and I'll get as far away like from it. here as I can. Good. Let's do it your way. Good. I'm glad that despite our initial discord, we could reach an agreement. Here, take something to calm your stomach. Now we'll need the keys to the monastery and some blood to make the tracks. Okay. What are you going to do? I need to get ready for a long journey. Prepare supplies, get some normal clothing somehow. That sort of thing. You can escape in that habit, but I need to vanish as fast as I can. What do I need the keys to the monastery for? How else will we get out? This place is practically a prison. Getting the keys won't be easy. I know, but Brother Solarius is a reformed thief. I'll bet he still has a few lockpicks lying about. If you know how to use them, they'll be worth finding. Oh, or know. there's the hard way. Steal the keys from the prior. He carries them with him at all times. They both sound hard to me. But needs must. And where am I supposed to get my hands on blood in a monastery? Oh. You'll find a parchment in the kitchen with a list of ingredients on it. All the things they're ordering. Add blood for making soup to the list. And when it's delivered the next day, take it before anyone notices it's even come. Alright, that's everything I need to know. I can get started. Excellent. Come and see me once you have everything. And try to be as fast as you can. And Gregor, thank you.
someone this game, I'm gonna figure something out. I'll see you in the end.